welcome and alternate members to the Conservation Commission if you know anyone that might be interested in serving. Uh, no experience necessary. We uh, train on the job. <laughs> That's how we all get started, right? <laughs> um, so, but if you are interested, please contact Becky Thompson in the town manager's office. Um, this is now next is, is public comment. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on agenda items? If not, we can wait till we get to the item, so. All right, so then next on, on our agenda is a visit with the uh, New Hampshire Fish and Game. Betsy. Yeah, please, yeah, please if okay. you don't mind. Uh, and then uh, what I do ask is that you fill in your name and your organization or address, whatever you prefer. That yeah, okay, that'd be great. Um, do we need a chair or something to put stabilize that on? Does that one have an arm you can rest it on? In everyone's packet, I found this map on, on your website, so that way everyone here has an idea of the locale as well. But you've got a more detailed map, I see. So I also provided everyone, Betsy, the letter that you sent. Okay, good. Okay, so they have that background as well. Um, I did communicate with the chief of police, okay. Mark Doyle. He told me that they, they may be here. So he, I did send a letter um, to them yep. um, through the email. Yep. Yeah, so they got it. Yeah. So so he's aware. Okay. So. I can start with why we're here. Yeah. Um, Jim, I can't. Was, was it last year that we did the cup? But it was two years ago that we came and yeah. talked about. Um, sorry, I should announce myself. I'm Betsy McNaughton. I'm a land agent at New Hampshire Fish and Game. And I'm Jim Mendez, the water board member for the Fish and Game. Okay. And. Um, <coughs> we own the property called Dumpling Brook Wildlife Management Area, which is um, depicted on this map. And when we did the cut, we had an open house. I think we had two, a couple of them. And one of the major concerns was the ATV use and the dirt bikes and the illegal you know, motorized traffic back there um, after the cut. Mm -hmm. And um, in trying to address those issues, we did come, and Jim came to the town and we addressed the issues in the sewer line um, where, where people were coming in off the sewer line. And um, Jim can probably talk about how you guys have corrected that since then. Um, what's that? Yeah, sure. So uh, the concern was one, that one second. Let's see if we can move a mic a little closer to him. Or Matt, do you mind turning on and getting a little closer? Just because we are recording, and this will be seen in, on TV uh, in replay. At two o'clock in the morning and whatever <laughs> else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, last week it was way out. Yeah. <laughs> this week it's me now. <laughs> so uh, there was a considerable amount of uh, concern about ATV use, uh, not only after the timber harvest, but before. Uh, it's been occurring there for a number of years. And uh, we realized that. We weren't all that happy with it either. Uh, a lot of the neighbors, some of, here, some of whom are here today, uh, also weren't pleased with all the ATV activity. And so we tried to take steps to try to curb that activity. Uh, we have a new access point right here, public recreation access here. Uh, this is also our main access road for the, the timber harvest to get to the log landing, which is represented by that green dot. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we've gated that. Uh, and because of the, uh, the boulders and sort of the drainage ditching on either side of the gate, it's pretty difficult for anybody to go around the gate. Uh, we did get permission from the town council to uh, put barriers uh, along the sewer line right of way, which is another uh, main access point for illegal ATV activity. Uh, and, uh, and we also, there was an, an illegal trail, an authorized trail uh, right along Ever Turnpike, uh, which has also been blocked. And uh, given these blockages and some of the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the water bars and some other things that we, we installed on the access roads and skid roads after the harvest, uh, I've noticed that the ATV activity uh, has decreased substantially, but there still is activity. Uh, and especially, uh, there, there are a few tracks, I was there this morning, there's still a few tracks going through the W lane. Uh, and there's a lot of activity along this bar line right away. <coughs> there's a lot of dumping that occurs right here uh, on this uh, section along Back River Road. Uh, there's illegal shooting that typically occurs right here in the sand pit. Uh, and there's a lot of ATV activity in that uh, sand pit as well. And so this is another major access point for ATVs to come in and have access to the, to 
to the wildlife management area and surrounding properties. And uh, so uh, we reached out to National Grid uh, to look to see if they'd be willing to block this access point. They own that property to the yeah. one of the two areas they that own, they own. Yeah, right? something yeah. like this. Oh, right. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they seemed willing, uh, but uh, hesitant. <laughs> hesitant. <laughs> and I'll let you address the hesitancy. Yeah, well, I met out here with um, a representative from National Grid um, on the property, and we walked in, you know, to, we walked into past the, the subdivision. I think, you know, th this is, it's not how it's called Cooper subdivision. This is Cashel. He right. Was, this is Cooper. But um, we walked in, and there was a whole bunch of fencing and declination, and, they s and I, we were working out a plan with them to, to block that access. And he seemed willing. He, he went back to his supervisor, and his supervisor seemed very hesitant. And um, w after I, sorry, to back up a little bit, um, after I met with the representative at National, uh, on the site from National Grid, I came into the town PD and um, talked to, I did not get the officer's name that I talked to, but um, told him that this National Grid was, you know, we're moving forward with blocking that, and they're, they were supportive of that, the, your, the Merrimack PD. Mm -hmm. And our officer, um, Todd Shuptuck, has also been wanting to figure out how to block this you know, illegal route because um, he can't keep up with it. Um, so when I went to the town PD, they just suggested to me that I come down to the planning, I think downstairs, and tell them as well. When I walked into planning, I don't I have the, the cards of the um, – people who I spoke with, but it was suggested that I bring it to the Conservation Commission. Um, not entirely sure why, <laughs> because National Grid does own the property, mm -hmm. and they have a right to gate it if they want, yeah. um, because th if they gate it, they're also gating it against hunters, which we're not too crazy about either, but um, they have a lot of problems there with, with, with dumping. So we're, we're here because it was suggested that we come and ask, and National Grid has the last comments that I had from um, the supervisor down in Massachusetts is um, he's concerned with mainly any conditions that the Conservation Commission may want to put on, um, it's actually New England Power who owns it and National Grid is the, the title company. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too sure, you know, he just wants us to make sure that it's all the town is okay with blocking it off. So that's where I, I'm at. Yeah, and, and I'm, I was kind of puzzled myself. To yeah, be and, and the only thing I can think of is this is a Massachusetts company. Yeah. You know, maybe in Massachusetts the Conservation Commission's have a little bit more power down there. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I can think of. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Turn yourself on. <laughs> where, where, so where are the gates going to go? Or you um, propose to go? They or right barriers right or whatever? Here. Yeah, we can't really control this one. I, I don't there, there are gates occasionally along this power line right away because some of the uh, adjoining uh, landowners raised concerns to the power company yep. years okay. ago. And and so the power company did uh, did gate along the right away. And that's a different power company altogether at this point. Okay. Um, this is owned by National Grid, and the easement is what was residential and commercial liberty. It's changed. So, the so they're putting gates on private property. No. Uh, they, they own it. They own, we own both. They own the two trees. Right, but they, they, they own it, so. They're oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, they're putting it on their own that's property. Own that's right. Their yeah. own yeah. property. Just, you know, yeah. making sure that you guys are in support okay. of it. Um, and if, uh, if, that, if, if you guys do end up supporting it and you record that in your minutes, it's beneficial to us if you could, if you could have those minutes and give them to the power company. I'm sure they, they would, might move to block it. Okay. So you've, al you've already put barriers down on the sewer easement? Yep. Yeah. And the and the Take town the town has said that was okay. Yeah. Well they have access now through the sewer easement to our gate. To our gate. Oh okay. They're, yeah, All right. that's how they're accessing it from there. So and each time you put a barrier in you find some percentage of decrease in usage by E P D traffic. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. say based on my own anecdotal observations, it has decreased substantially the number of tracks and trails that I see on my property. This is versus last year. Versus last year. I think the hardest work for sure is when you come in through the back door. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the only thing that we won't be able to negate is traffic coming off the Cooper Road or Calvert Estate. That's nothing I don't, there's nothing really that I know of that we can do. Okay. 
see a good trail. Well, I mean, but in certainly internally, if they're if they're accessing through a standard set of trails internally, uh, I mean, you you can put barriers up for ba you know, for months. And that would help us as the board to really keep right. up with that. But do they have do they have do they have any idea of what's being dumped? I mean, I would think they'd be concerned. I think they um, routinely go out there. When we were out there, we were propelled with some tires and you know some yeah. stuff to yeah. even yeah. us up. Carpet, the stuff. Old carpet. Yep. CDs. Yeah. 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 Would it just be in exchange for them blocking it? Were you going to put up the you know no wheel vehicles along their boundary? Yeah. Which would go last for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we have those same issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand that because yeah. we have 1,500 acres that we manage and have the same issue. Yeah, yeah, I actually went onto your website. I actually was just, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just ordered the drone. I was yeah. like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. At the risk of a, a little bit of um, uh, quick enter the answer, don't know. <laughs> 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 well, why, why split with respect to a city green plan? Because it, you need written landowner permission under the um, rules for fish and game for the wildlife management area, like there's a special use process that you have to go through to request that landowner permission, and we generally don't approve it. Um, we're there for wildlife habitat, and you know we don't have a wildlife habitat that we have in, in such a concentrated area in part of the state. So this is just hmm. this is this is the section where we're doing the rabbit. Yeah, they they have rabbit. Harvest, that's what we do that too. Cause it's yeah, but that, that's that rat though. There's a uh, the shoo 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 shoo. No, uh, New England cottontail. Oh, New England cottontail. Yeah. 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 So typically on uh, fish and game owned, you mentioned fish and game owned properties, it's no ATV. We don't. You you were you you are allowed to request a written permission from our executive director, but um, I don't think the only time we've ever approved it, it was somebody who was a wasn't a quadruple agent, but he sort of um, was in Pittsburgh. Um, so, you know, we generally don't allow that kind of rider activity because it promotes other, you know, it, it sets a precedent, and that's not what we're we're here for. Yeah, as Habitat. Betsy was saying, our primary uh, target for our property <coughs> is wildlife habitat and wildlife, and uh, and uh, ATVs. Uh, they. We need a de decent road infrastructure to maintain ATVs. Uh, we don't have the money. Uh, we don't have the means, the manpower to main maintain ATV trails. Or the mission. Uh, yeah. Or the mission. Right. Yeah, that's right. It's not our mission. And uh, too much recreation on property can actually have a negative impact on wildlife. Yeah. Good statement. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we know that. <laughs> we live that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> we're just here um, asking, you know, so that we can get back to um, New England Power and National Grid um, that you guys are in supportive of this. And then maybe, I don't know how quickly we move. I think we move slower than us. Um, maybe in the next year, you know, fairly slow. And we're doing it for a lot of reasons, for the, for the wildlife habitat, but the gates that they put up, at that site will direct people to the wildlife management area's parking lot because they don't necessarily like hunters on their property because people use the the top of the towers to sight in. Oh. So, and I can't blame them for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I can't really, unfortunately, you know, we're kind of doing their bidding here, but yeah. it, I think it will help us in the long run. Okay. Great. Well, I see no reason yeah, not to yeah. support the, the gates. <laughs> You found it somewhat effective, and it comes and goes. You get the ebb and flow. Yeah. You, know, you get you get some new younger folks all of a sudden get new machines, and and they want to go out and go play, and then they move on to go to college or whatever else, and <laughs> you get that downward trend, and then it goes back up again, you know. So we've seen that happen. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, do you want to make this a vote for the record then? Sure. So, sure. so I move that we are in favor of gates. At that p at that p at that location, Jack River Road. Jack River Road. Do you want to uh, second? Yeah. Okay. Second by Matt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> so that passes. That's <laughs> unanimous. Five zero zero. So, great. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Yeah. Now, Thank if you. there's something we can do to help directly that you comes up, just let us know. But I'm not sure there's a whole yeah, lot we can do. Yeah. So. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Do we own any adjacent property? We don't. I went looking. Right? We don't have any, nothing close there. So. Thank you. Great. And did, and did we get both of you to sign? No, I didn't reserve that. Okay. Yeah. So did we get? Yeah. Are, are you? I'm sorry. Are you folks, uh, adjacency wise? I mean, where, where on the maps are you off, are off the back river road or? Okay. And are you so seeing a? However, last month there was a Jeep that came along. Oh. Came on one of the streets and went into the house. Yeah, the Jeep was coming in yeah. on yeah. Clark Circle. It was right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. And they're, and they're coming down that whole the the sewer easement road. Yes, but they're coming in from somewhere in the back now. years ago and that they get it this year but they're they're funding the the sewer to the side to help more people to get keep yeah the yeah this yeah they usually do that every year so yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean that's great to have that partnership yeah is that i thought that i thought they didn't get that money it may i don't know i'm not no, they sure they, they did yeah. yeah they, they yeah. did but it was it was smaller it this was year smaller. and it's it's gone they've they've done their patrols already yeah they don't have enough money yet yeah if you would have been here last week, you would have heard us have a discussion about actually funding additional patrols. So yeah, on our own property, on our own property. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're, we're experiencing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. The backyards, you know, the whole night, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, you were. I'm assuming you were calling the Merrimack PD every time. Thank you. So next on our agenda is, uh, is, is, do you prefer Jackie or Jacqueline? Jackie. Jackie Thompson. So, and I see uh, we do have some town folks with us. Yep. Yeah, two. You guys want to sit back there or you want to come up to the table? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. If, you, think I'll play if you're going to say anything, you're going to have to come up to a mic, and you know that. That's right. Rules haven't changed. So with us, we have uh, Adam Jacobs and Paul McCalley as well. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> okay, starting again, okay? This time I went to the conservation and I filled in the paper and I was supposed to get some response on this one, okay? And I waited two months. Then I went to see this guy, Paul, okay? I didn't get no response at all, at all. So then I went to see the- Can we uh, see that paper? Yes, we can. Great. But I want it back. Yep, no sure. problem. Uh, then the town manager, okay, his boss, 
uh, I went to her, I explained stuff. Oh, I went out to see the Beavers Dam. They're doing a good job. Are you coming to where I live, where all the water is? No, you're just looking where the beaver is. They're doing a good job. Yes, but my my land's got the water, and I got some more pictures if you want to see the pictures. So then he told me, I mean, no, not him. She told me to go down and see them again for conservation, and then you're going to see what this says. So what would you like us to do? I want, um, they had said last year that you know how that place is, the water, it doesn't, ha it's not regulated right, okay? If they would regulate it right, maybe the water would be down and it would be on my property. But right now it's on my property and I have this tree, okay? And then back of this tree is full of water and then you got the cat tails and that's in there too that shouldn't be that way and then my uh, yard okay I can't mow it when it rains so much because it's like you you're walking on sponge you're walking on sponge or if I have somebody come over the guy will do the job but he'll do a shitty job okay it looks crap and I paid fifty dollars one time and I said no I'm gonna do it myself but like I said if it rains so much I can't do it because I'm just walking on the spongy uh, grass. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to be lifted up. My land, I wanted them to lift it up somehow. Last year, we had Tom Howe, if you remember correctly. Do, yeah. He was supposed to do something. But you know what he did, don't you? Big fat zero. Nothing. Nothing was done to the land. So all that. Have you talked with him at all? No, because I got mad. I'm a very person. I, I get tired of playing the games. And I said to her, the manager, I says, if my husband was alive, he'd get things done. Because I'm a woman, you all step on me. You're not doing nothing for me. You're just telling, you're making me tell you what I feel like saying and all this and that, but I still get nothing done. It, it's still going to be wet. Nothing's going to be done. You've got to really do something. I told her, I was very nice about it. I told her if I drop dead today or tomorrow, my land's not going to get sold because of all this water problems and all that. Nobody's going to want to buy it. And I don't want to leave it like that. That's not me. I want it to be fixed. If I would have known that this land that I bought 27 years ago that would happen like this, I would have never bought that house. Never. Never. So I'm, I'm, I'm not begging because I don't want to beg. But I'm just asking to do something to raise the land up. Because like I said, water keeps on coming and it's pulling the land away. It's pulling it away. Like I said, I showed you the pictures. Last year it was bad. This year it's even worse because it made like little islands. You know what I'm saying? Little islands. And then there's the grotto too. I can't say more because I get upset. I very do. How many I years have you had the problem, Jacqueline? Well, I've been there 27, but I didn't know it was like that before. But has it been all 27 years that it's been like that? Maybe not. But it also killed some trees. We had planted some trees on that side, and it killed it. Then we even had a beaver that died on our land. It came on our land. I called conservation. The woman came down, my husband was alive, he helped her put that thing in that crate, you know? But it's been quite a while. It's not, no lies to it. I'm not lying. I don't like to lie, you know that. You should know me by now. 
We both go to the same church. Yep. Jackie, last time we talked, I asked you if you went downstairs and had um, community development help you fill out a dredge and fill permit with uh, the state of New Hampshire. That's Have you heard back from uh, them? No. This is what this lady wrote this out because I, I'm i not a good speller. Okay? okay. So she wrote it out for me. And it was like over two months because I went down. When I went down the last time, I said, when did the woman put it in there? Okay. Yeah. So she looked up in the file, May 22nd. And th that was filed with the state? Well, it was filed downstairs. That looks like a service request for That's work that she should get. Yeah. 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 But they didn't do nothing else. And then, okay. like I said, this other lady wrote this other thing out, and okay. I'm screwed, okay? I'm going to tell you, I'm screwed. I'm getting screwed again. Well, we've also got a beaver management plan going on, Jackie, and we discussed that in the last Monday or two Mondays ago. I believe your consultant came in to discuss the beaver management gauge, yes. what's going on. And, and we, we told you that we'd have to look into the beaver management plan over there because if we get them out of one location, they might go into another location. So we need an overall plan for the whole town. Um, we understand that it's frustrating. I've been down to your property. Matter of fact, Gage and myself were with the town manager and Adam, and we went down there and we looked at your property and we looked at what the beavers were doing. And the beavers are busy. Uh, mm -hmm. Adam's crew went down the day before, took out about six inches of the dam, and when we were there, we saw a beaver rebuilding it that day. So I don't know where we stand with that plan, but I believe that that's in the process. <coughs> How long is it going to take? Another I 10 years or I so? I have no idea. I know they're supposed to be done shortly. Yeah, so Maybe I'll be that, dead. That, that plan did uh, ID 10 areas in town that are the most problematic. Your, your pond, the, pro the Meadowood Pond, or is that right? That's what we're calling it now, Meadowood Pond, is, uh, is one of the items that's on the top top 10 list. Uh, we've had a number of folks look at it, our, you know, ourselves included, but we've had uh, the Fish and Game come out and look at it, and we've had this company come out and look at it, and everyone's coming up with about the same conclusion, is that there's going to have to be some type of leveling device in there and some extensive trapping. Uh, so it's going to be, you know, other our own recommendation whether, we're, you know, what we go forward. So we ha we don't have anything in writing from them yet. We, we, get some, we got some preliminary information today. Really, everyone's coming up with the same idea right now. It's level, some type of leveling device. So that means they're not going to build up my land. They're going to leave so, it the way it so is. So the dredge and fill permit that we've been asking you to fill, yeah. to fill out, that has to get done by the landowner, which is you. Yeah, okay. So, so and I went downstairs, and I, like I said, I right, had her so filled out. So last year when you came to us about this, that's right. what we said then. We can't fill your property. That has, that has to be something that, you know, we can, we can make recommendations to approve it and – with DES. Let me pay for what the land has to be done to. Yes, I understand yeah. that very good. Boy, so do I do. So the only other thing that we can do is, is, is control the level of the water. Well, this is a damn thing to say, but I pay my frickin' taxes every single year, twice a year, and I'm by myself, and it's almost eight years I lost my husband. And I'm telling you, if he was alive, he'd tell you guys somewhere to go, and I'm not kidding you because that's the way he was. But I'm fighting for myself. I'm the only one here tonight besides you guys, okay? But I'm fighting for it because I believe in fighting for what's right. But how come I have to pay so much money on taxes and I'm losing land? You tell me that. Okay. So what G as Gage was saying, what we're trying to do is first is to, is to figure out the best way to manage the beavers because until we get that done, there's nothing else we can do because things, things can adjust. But when it comes to changing the level of your land, mm -hmm. that's controlled by the state. That's totally out of our control. They get to decide what you can do and what you can't do. I know. They told that's me I'd have to get a permit if right. I wanted to build. Right. So, but that permit, have to be a permit, you can't do that permit downstairs. Those folks don't fill out that permit for you. Right. You need to have an engineer or yourself fill out the permit. That fills that describes what it is you're going to do, why you're doing it, and it has to meet yeah. all the rules of the state. Oh yeah, I know, I understand. There's that. a number of pages involved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and then once once that permit gets submitted, 
uh, that permit goes through us for our recommendation, which we can, we can do, but then it goes back to the state, New Hampshire DEF, for them to decide whether or not they approve the project or whether they want to modify it and, and all of that. It, they have a process. Once, th once that's done, yeah. then, it's then uh, honestly, it's up to you as the landowner to do that activity because I have no, ab uh, I have no available funds in, in a way for us to fix private property. Okay, can you write everything that you just said? Yeah. Write it down for me because I am not a good person to write things down. I have a very hard time to write. I'm not lying. I, I'm not good in spelling. I, I was the worst speller in, in school, and I hated school, and I quit school. I was only 16 years old when I quit. Right. Okay. So, so can, can I um, take that as something that I'll do this week and, and either deliver it to you or, s or mail it to you? Because my handwriting is terrible, so I'd have to type it up. <laughs> oh, just just drop it in the mail. How's okay. that? All right. Do you pr you prefer mail or email? I don't have an email. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. So, but uh, ag again, it's really it really is once this is all done, it it does fall back to you. Yeah, I know. Spend some more money, Jackie. You're good for that. It's uh, my hands are. Th I, I know. Are I understand, but I got I got to do something about the taxes. Yeah. If I'm losing land, I shouldn't be charged as much as I'm getting charged. S so there is a process for that as well. You can address that with the town assessor's office, or you can take it straight to the town council. The town council is the board of assessors in this town. And when do they fall on it? When do they? They meet every other Thursday. I mean, they, they're the selectmen. What used to be the selectmen is now the town council. But what they're going to ask you to do, though, is to talk with the, the assessing department up here first. Yeah. Um, and go through that and make sure that your th that your land is assessed appropriately for the conditions of the land, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's an abatement process for this year. I think that's over now. That's already so gone by. So, so you so be by April, isn't it? Right, I believe so. So you'd have to, you know, but you could get prepared and get ready for next mm -hmm. April. I will definitely. So, I mean, that's something to consider. You know. It, yeah, but it really comes down to what the assessor assesses the land at based on the conditions. They may come back and say it's assessed appropriately. They may come back <laughs> and say it's not. I don't know. I'd I like don't to throw them in the water I if they told me that. Well, I, again, I don't know their process. That's th they're, the, mm -hmm. they're the professionals for that, and the town council will probably rely on, on their opinion because that's what they're paid to do for the town. Crooked. Crooked. So, so it didn't help me at all again. What so, else do you so, need? So, so like I said, I can, I'll put – I'll put what we said together. I yeah. do know that you know we are working on trying to figure out the best way to manage the water so it doesn't fluctuate up and down. It should have been done a long time ago, to tell you the truth. So, and it wasn't. Yeah, well, okay. we're, s we're spending money well, to try and get done? it done. I'm all done with you. Are you okay. That's it. All right, make out that form for yep. me. I'd appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else, anything else on this agenda item you want to bring up? Yeah, if you can include us in the write-up yeah. so we can put it in the file for you. Yeah, yeah, I can do all that. Thank you. She was in the minority as far as the, the level goes. I think the decision at that meeting was to wait and see what the state said about a fill permit. And if they were going to grant a fill permit, which it seemed amenable last year to, to the fill, not so much now. Mm -hmm. um, then we would choose to keep a higher level on the pond and sure. just leave it just where it is now. Because we haven't heard anything. We've been in a holding pattern in public works for the beaver are relatively happy if we don't destroy the dam. So so there hasn't been a big fluctuation, but I'm sure water is, is slowly creeping up. So um, I guess that's from, from my standpoint, from public works, we'd look to get a, a target level, an actual elevation level. I've got some water rods we can put in and, and maybe as part of the beaver plan we can we can get to that target um, so that really that I think that's what we're still waiting for on that uh, yeah I am I'm, I've been informally watching the level over the last few months and I'd say we're a few inches higher than we were last year at this time so J just a comment uh, I just came back from Canada and saw a few beaver ponds and they had uh, I noticed that they had a control pipe and you know coming out of like one of the dams to keep a level um, the they enclosed that outlet or that pipe um, in metal, in a metal cage, to keep the beaver from 
locking up that tube. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that, and that's, again, we've had, it's been looked at by, you know, ourselves, and then we've had um, the national uh, APHIS come out and look at it, and then we've had, you know, the BGA come out and look at it, and we're all pretty much going down the same direction, I, is there's going to have to be some kind of leveling device to, to install, because the minute we, you know, you, you've already tried a couple times, put some things in there, you know, to mitigate the problem, and they're they're plugged up. I mean, right away, plugged up. I mean, you go you go a couple of days, and they're they're full. So there's going to have to be that Clemson device. Is seemingly the the kind of the the one that seems to be that everyone's gravitating towards. Um, but uh, it, it's going to be uh, we have to, at some point in time. Uh, if we do it through this APHIS, I'm not sure we have to get the permit to put it in. So the minute we get step water, we get it, get it in the water to put it in, we're supposed to have some kind of permit that says we're putting it in. So that's what kind of what we're waiting for BGA to see if they can get that figured out to exactly what we have to do. Um, but then once we do that, we now we still have to come up to then we got to give Adam a member and says, okay, you know, this is this is where we're shooting for. Because right now, if you go and look at it, that dam was not there. That water would be what, four four feet lower. Yeah, it'd be four feet lower. You know, so yeah, yeah. which is, I mean, that's a because that's where that low port drain is, that low that low drain. So I, I would imagine that at some point in time, when that thing was built, that was supposed to be what the you know. I'm assuming that's what the level would have been, because they took that. Didn't they take the dam out to put the sewer pipe in? Had a notch in the in the beaver dam to get water low enough so they could safely work, get the dam in, but then they let it let it fill back up. We could, uh, that was 1998. We, we could go back and look and try to achieve that level. At that, in 98, the, the Beaver Dam was approximately the same height as what is now the secondary overflow, which is still low. But, um, okay. we could even, again, we probably would have built the new motor dam or the Lincoln Machine or whatever. Um, but it's definitely come up since 98, but even in 98, it was lower. So, keeping yeah. close to having a problem that's not losing money. And I believe at the public hearing, once you got that dredge and fill permit, Mr. Howe yeah. was graciously going to do it right. or help her out with the backfill, so to speak, uh, of her property. Um, so I think that's where he comes into play. He can't do anything either until. Right. So we're trying. And I, I know they have initially after that meeting, I know. They did, did go over and speak with her. I went over and spoke with her about filling out the permit. So it's not been for lack of trying on our part to get her to. She has to initiate it. We can't, you know, we're not the landowners. So it's a little bit tiring. Right. But we still have the dilemma of determining what the level is going to be. Right? From your perspective, you need Certainly. to still set the set. We have to set the limit. Yes. There's, There's a level. Somebody has to set the limit yeah. to decide for on the, the limit. town to put in the rod to say, this is the water level. And the control well, device. And the control well, device. That's the one I have a big one here. But the way I'm looking at it is there, there's, a, there's a primary drain and there's an overflow. And I would imagine that from you know, a safety point of view, they never intended that water to go up over the overflow. So to me, the bottom of the overflow would be the maximum level that that water should ever be. I mean, it, it's just a common sense to me would be that's you know somewhere between that that bottom and you know what is it what, three feet four feet probably to the main mm -hmm. drain. There's got to be some level between there, and just we just need to pick one and say. And, and right now we're eight, 18 inches over the secondary. Right. And so that's the thing. You know, so to me, somewhere between those two, we could just you know. Pick one, you know, an inch below, two inches below, a foot below the bottom of the of the overflow, and say that's it. Because the is the existing contract. Oh, GGA. GGA. Well, <laughs> then no, no, they no, didn't pick no, the level. They didn't because it's it, that's not uh, to me that's not their purview. I mean, they're saying how do you manage the how do you manage the beaver, and how do we manage what you know the areas that we're having a problem with. That that sewer ejector and that was all an engineered, you know, system. That and, and at some point in time, potentially the beaver could build a dam big enough that would impact if it was ever breached. That would impact the sewer ejector. So we have some type of safety issue. And it's not until 
that uh, we propose that if GW deems that that water level is too high to start causing a problem, that they can go in and do something. Because our current policy says that they can't do anything until we say it's okay. Un unless there's an emergency unless situation. Unless there's an emergency situation. So short of waiting for that to that point, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's just for us to say, yep, we're just going to pick the, you know, you know, it's minus six in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Unless we have a or something engineered yeah. control device or you know, these are yeah. this is pointless to try to maintain a you know, a one foot so that's kinda how we got into last yeah. year's meeting. We couldn't maintain that a, even a one foot thing with any kind of regularity without being there every single day and we just couldn't. So yeah. it would be four days or five days or over a long weekend and now we come in and bring it back down to where we thought we needed to be and then everybody will come out of the the uh, the storm and houses and get upset because now water's down and the flies are out and mud you mm -hmm. know, has come back up and, and down and up and down. So mm -hmm. I think it, the dominoes that have to fall with resin fill permit needs to be determined if that's even an option. If it's not, then I think we need to pick a lower level than we're at now, mm -hmm. like Ray just said. And if we can get a level and a control device in place, then we can actually keep that level and that keeps everybody else happy. I don't think everybody else at, that came to the meeting last year was upset with with a uh, lower level, just of an of even yeah, they don't they don't want it they don't want to change it because it 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 you know makes the yard muddy and then it makes it stink and it blows. So they want to pick a level, keep a level. Uh, she wants to preserve fossil residue because you know that impacts the yard. You go and look at Cook's property. I'm not sure. You know, granted this has to get quarter so, but look up the bottom of her driveway and the yard. I mean, you're not going to raise the yard that much. It certainly have to be something done after that water level's down too, because you'd have to have some type of berm in there that's a little bit more solid than cook earth. And that can be high. It's going to be dangerous if, if they create a dike. Yeah. So I mean, and, and she's right at the bottom of that hill. So anything that flows down, she took a retaining wall up and said it's just going to puddle up behind her. You know, the hydraulic pressure behind her is going to is going to ruin that ruin whatever she puts out there. And we do have a contract that only went out to bids and we are set to go and get updated quotes because they're six months old but to put that flow device in and um, I think it was either the state or the federal government yeah, the one APHIS, of the APHIS, APHIS, APHIS thing came in and gave us a price to notch yeah. it put it in to keep the water at a certain level so we're just waiting for GZA, we, we knew we were going to go with GZA, the con well, a contract for the beaver management, and their findings, and then we're good, you know, to get on their schedule sometime. Yeah, well, I'm most interested in getting that study done because I don't want to do, I don't want to do a whole lot till we know the total impact of whatever it is we're going to do. Yeah, we we beat the trap pretty extensively behind uh, Madison last year, and that and that's kept that water level there pretty good this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been back there a couple times and not had a big deal. So, I mean, we could do, we could kind of go down that same path. It would buy us, you know, potentially a year. You know, if we go in there and trap in there, it's going to be a little difficult because of, of you know, surrounding neighborhoods. You're not going to want to have the same type of trapping going on. Yeah. Potentially, you want to lie trap in places that are in public view. A little slower. Yeah. Not that she's not going to set up as many traps. So, um, I don't know if that's something you want to consider. I'd pre I'd prefer to wait for the study yep. to come in. I mean, we're only what a month away, a month and a half away. I would, yeah, something like that. So. so yeah, that's just not the ball I would. Okay. As long as we make, you know, if we can make a decision before the ice, right? Definitely, right. Definitely helpful. Yeah, end of yeah. October, that's right. Because if we can get the device in before ice, uh, that way in the spring it'll be at that level, and you won't have the mud because it'll be right. it'll be at that level, right? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. The end of October, November, if we can, you know, get it. If that's where we're going, we could always make the call to see what their availability is for November timeframe. And that, that that space is on our property now, so it's going to be one of those first ones we're right. looking to get yeah. mm -hmm. in the pipeline. 
and I can I can talk to you guys just tell them we need to move that that thing forward because I know they're trying to work they're trying to work all the things together just to get the recommendation of going forward. Okay. Anything else? Some of them have like just like the natural stone style stamp on them. <laughs> Cadillac. Colloquially known as the Cadillac uh, Beaver Defeater. Um, I don't know if that's a uh, Minnesota, um, English or Minnesota device, I think. I'd have to go back and look. It's pretty old. Um, I, Gage and I were talking about the other day that there's a potential that that was originally at, at Madison in that area and it was turned up, but nowhere you know being used. Taylor, through its metalworks vendor, it takes to get it back to them. They'd like some information on put it in Point Madison for the uh, activity. And that's what that helps. It's not huge, but they can still pack the outside perimeter of it with those kinds of things. I- is it considered a beaver deceiver? Uh, I think that is a it's slightly a, it's different. It's a leveling device. Yeah. I think the beaver deceiver is an actual brand name. Brand name. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a leveling device. It's a gets you a bigger surface area for them to have to work, and they'll also have baffles that go around and put around stuff to make it slide back. Different kind. They still they still pack, but yeah. they'll take a little longer. It, it works well for a vertical riser like we have at Madison. I don't know if that's the one that you're talking about, but it's the big it beaver down there. Yeah, yeah just that Clemson Farm level. That's that's what it makes them do. It's a working joke. That or, or or you know the large beaver bucks, which we already know they can't they have one the only thing they know is they need to be two or three, or two or three times as long. Right, yeah, because the one that's in there is completely completely clogged. I think that area is you know tough because you know the locks are further out from the water, and the wind goes that way. You're leaving that yep. that uh, drop off, and at Natasilk, that device um, is relatively shallow up and up to the riser, um, so we get a lot of debris that makes it that sort of spool, and it clogs that part. So we pull off and have to cut them out and have them weed out. As they go down these Madison areas, where the where the snake flow almost completely stops, and then they they don't get to come out. So try to hog through the um, all the debris they can find. Hmm. So and avoid getting washed out. Yeah, <laughs> avoid puncturing them. Yep. So it'll be a slow slow failure on that hook roll that we just run a zigzag and then <laughs> once in a while have to reel. But you know it's not uh, it's not foolproof. No. Yeah. Um, and if that I mean that could be. And we wouldn't we wouldn't get the wall of water at Natasilk, but we would get it in Metaworks. Metaworks failed the dam itself. The Beaver Dam failed, and then the dam failed in the dam itself. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Okay. Thanks for having us. All right. Uh, we have no old business. No statutory business that takes us to, I'm sorry, we do have old business, but no statutory business takes us to the template for forestry plans. And uh, Lauren, you had put this in our in our heads uh, a little while back. You wanna go over what you got? Yeah, so um, I, I gave it out, I asked people to look it over and see what's missing and what we want that's not in here or if there are things in here that we don't really care about. Um, and then from there, if we want, we can kind of expand the direction for these or talk to Data State and ask for some money or whatever one wants. But so I don't know if there are things people think are missing or want clarification on or things that overlook it. I would. I'm not gonna say it's missing. I just think that yeah. there's a couple things I'd like to add. Just to yeah. so when we do a, when we yeah. do a write up, we're also looking at. Yeah. Uh, in particular, on uh, item two, on the parcel location, yeah. you say linkage to other lands. I, I'd like to be able to classify those other lands. You know, right. are they are they commercial? Are they residential? Are they woodlands? Are they you know just some kind of? Because I, I mean I say I'm us- I'm thinking this as being more of a cheat sheet when we start writing them up. Right. To remember things to things to include so I think links to other lands I mean right now we my red person like oh yeah well yeah. other conservation lands well what about yeah. the other neighborhood which is I mean 
what the next day is. Yeah. And um, the access and infrastructure, uh, I just think we should include potential parking there too, because that becomes a real, that's become a real issue that we need to address. Other than that, I like this. I think it's good. Yeah. I think it's a good, uh, good outline. Maybe that the items under C any potential could go in, you know, go into other areas as well then. Depending what the parking for the potential recreation parking area that may may get highlighted in different areas depending on yep. the property. So yeah, it makes sense to pull that out. So I was thinking under F uh, uh, Roman numeral five, the plan management activities, I'd like to give that more predominance in our plans and make that yeah. Roman numeral number three kind of slide it over a few you know because I think there's this it needs to kind of stand out as a major section you, you mean make it G, G? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no I mean make it Roman numeral uh, three. Oh, oh, oh okay actually way over. Right. Yeah, move it yeah, way, way over. over okay okay yep yeah because we certainly need the goals and objectives yeah. I mean that drives the rest of the whole document um, and parcel information is very important, but I think the how we're going to manage or the planned activities just needs to stand as a major section of the plan. Yeah, I agree. So, um, and this really kind of goes beyond what we've been doing for our traditional forestry plan. So, is forestry plan really the right name we want to call this at this point? No, I mean, I think it's really a, it's the proper name at this point. Yeah. It includes a forestry component. Right, and that's... So. Yeah. Well, I guess that would be an interesting way to look at it too. From uh, you could have a single outline, so anything we write up is going to be similar in fashion, mm -hmm. and if it takes a takes a turn towards more of a recreational, you know, bend or a more forestry, you know, it would still fit into the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, with Horse Hill, it's 563 acres. Forestry is just a small subcomponent, and at to this point. After nearly ten years, ten years, we haven't chosen to do any forestry out there because it was turned out to be just one small area where they thought work would would be necessary. Well, I mean, a forest management plan can be leave it alone. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, yeah. Right. that can be what it Vehicle. is, but it really is whole. I, I think thinking of all of the different aspects and how do you highlight them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to change this to just proposed. This is the management property management, management property plan. management plan. Yep, I like. thinking about it so <laughs> which I think is clear because all the different aspects covered yep. timbers <laughs> a little bit of it yep. so. so I was also thinking we probably um, want to be thinking about where we want to try this out this template out at some point whether that's sooner or later but at some point we're going to want to Feels like I was gonna say it feels fun. I almost the, the smallest piece of parcels we have, you know, that and a, a, like a uh, similar hill. You know, something small that's that or or I mean, I'm sorry, I've been poking this a lot, but Washington Conservation Area. The, my concern with with Fields Farm is that there's that the adjacent property that's just gonna do some major change, and may have an impact on the commission because of what was discussed here at previous mm -hmm. meetings. We may want to wait on the Fields Farm and wait till we see the extent of what Fields Farm could become. You know what I mean? I said that we're talking about the street in front of the foundation. Yeah. This would be part of it. Just not the square. Yeah. Some stuff we need to write about that we write about. Yeah, a little over half a million. <laughs> yep. The other thing we think about is at least in some cases, some of the information may be able to be completed by subcommittees that are other properties. So in some cases, we may not want this all to be done in that way to cross that. Well, well uh, when I look at it, I'm thinking there's probably not a whole lot we would, I mean, our forester could certainly contribute on the timber quality and, mm -hmm. and, and that sort of part of it. And probably some of the ecological features too. Yeah, or we could have an ecologist do that as, as opposed to the forester, you know what I mean? 
that was acceptable. Yeah. From my perspective. Right. Well, we've done that before. Yeah, historical stuff, we should be able to dig that up ourselves. And, and, and all you know, access and infrastructure, we should be able to do. Um, so, yeah, that yeah. may need some input from the forester, too, though, in the sense that some of that access may be done as part of you know, if you're going to get a skid road, you know, you're going right. to need to get in, you know, where the driving and where the dump is, and some of the trails, so it could be. it's probably best to kind of f a bigger activity where we would sub out pieces and then do the rest ourselves or you know or have one of our members lead it or whatever you want to do so do you think recreation should go under that new number number three yeah, or well, I, mean or I think you could kind of pull out a lot of those things like re recreation could be its own thing. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can organize it, you know. It, it may change from property to property. Yeah. For some of the properties, we might not want to have, we may not want to uh, you know, advise recreation. So whether it's preservation as opposed to conservation, I'm not sure. Yeah, so this is kind of adapted from the management plan we did with Forest Society and then property that recreation is a big thing and that kind of becomes its own deal type thing. Like and properties that are just incredibly important ecological resources, that becomes a bigger component. So it has to be adaptable to each property individually. Okay, so where do we want to go from here with this thing? Make it our official outline? Yep. That's easy. Is that the consensus of the commission? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's easy. So it's our official outline for a property management plan. Um, do we need any more detail on the pieces or do we think this is enough detail at the right level of detail? I would say to start with, I think this is probably pretty good. I mean, as we get into it and start, you know, as Warren said, as we get into it and we start generating our a plan, the first plan, I mean, some of these are going to go into a, a little bit more deep and some of these are going to become, you know, more glossed over. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Gilmore Hill, I think, is a perfect uh, example. It's, you know, there's not really going to be a lot of recreation over there. It's, you know, small walking trails and that's really about it. Yeah. You know, so the recreation section is going to be small. And, you know, Greater Woods has got a, it's, it's much more considerable. So, do we want to start an activity where we start working to this plan, or or, um, or are we overwhelmed with activities right now and want to maybe kick this up in the winter time frame? I, you know, I don't. Um, I know I personally can't lead this on any property at this point. So I think it'd be interesting to send it out to the subcommittees and say, you know, this is what we need moving forward because we're all they're all our properties. You know, if there are components we can work on and fall within, and collect data. Yeah, I mean, so that when we go to write them and have them written, mm -hmm. we're not starting from scratch. And keep it in mind when we're outlining properly so that if we document something, it's like sort yep. of like all in one place. And then maybe in the winter, kick it out the following year and say, this is what we need possibly put funds towards getting some of them completed on hybrid dump. Well, I'm just thinking Greater Woods and Hills Hill, we probably have all these components already in the documents that have been generated. Yeah. It's really Wildcat Falls and the other properties where we don't. And the only one that has a subcommittee is the Wildcat Falls one. So the rest of it is up to us whether or not or we can create. <laughs> I got myself more work, didn't I? <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> So that <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting that go because I was like, Greater Woods and Horse Hill are already done, yeah. so keep yeah. digging. Yeah, well, so I mean, on some so level, so it would be good to update that, you know, and yeah, keep right. them updated, Absolutely. too, and put it all into a general yes. document. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And it's, that's a perfect example. If we're doing that, we're going to be doing the, the work up in Greater Woods. I mean, that's going to be a perfect time to spend some, you know, 
spent some upside upside time on in there. Yeah. I mean, I think something that I think is important in thirteen years is boundary maintenance. I'm not aware that we do any boundary maintenance on our properties, and that may be something maybe we do, and I'm just not aware of it. But that may be something we want to think about doing as mm -hmm. part of the whole one of the more important things because we could be dealing with all kinds of potential encroachments or issues that are just less promising long term if we don't go back to the old thing. Yeah, I was at the Hoist Lake Committee this past, uh, previous week, and um, they have been monitoring certain sections of the boundary, right. and they have marked certain sections, but yep. there are some sections they haven't yep. marked. And they, it's an ongoing project that they have, which has been, I think it's been pretty much on hold the last couple of years because people who have signed up for it haven't done it for whatever reason. Sure. But yeah. yeah. Um, but at least with Horse Hill, it was all done at one time when we bought the property, and it was done by a forester, Dan Steele, when he yep. did all his forestry work. So we have a good idea of where all the, the, the stakes, the granite markers, yep. the the poles that are in the ground or not in the ground, you know, so, so you can retrace those steps. Yep. So, yeah, I'm not sure we have that same luck on all our other properties. I think Wildcat Falls has been pretty much done on property lines mm -hmm. too. Greater, greater Woods is pretty well bounded. Yeah. But the new properties are Yeah, new properties added are added. Later in. Yeah, they weren't always added on. So the, the original, yeah, so we have some extra boundaries in there. So now we have some interior boundaries marked. <laughs> yeah. Added. Um, that's my, that's so that's a good point. That's one thing maybe we should, in the plan management activities, we should have reoccurring maintenance activities as, a, as an item on there too. Right, yes. Yeah. All right, well, if you don't mind speaking to your subcommittee, I'll speak to mine and you speak to yours. And sure. Right, but you know, in the bigger picture, though, we <laughs> we need to implement. Yeah. I guess we need to at some point decide to execute on a property. So I won't lose that item, but I'm not prepared to drive that today. And I don't see anyone else who who has the energy or the time to do that right now. Then I'll bring it back up again later. I would like to at some point do this at Field Farm, and I'd be happy to lead it. But like you said, there's a little bit more to the puzzle there, so we probably should wait. Right. And it is actively going through the planning process, so I don't think the wait is that long. Mm. Yeah. The other thing that maybe we can think about is if we decide to acquire any of the land, that we might want to make sure that this is done as part of that right. purchase so that we have some prior to purchase? Well, within a set period of time. Kind of prioritize what we do that way. Maybe the yeah. initial assessment prior to purchase. Yeah. We use this as a rough. Yeah. Try yeah. to try to try to get some outline information on us before we go. Yeah. I mean, I mean it gives you a lot of that information to really understand how it fits into the. Right. It's going to be a lot. And it's going to be a lot easier to give something like that to a subcommittee and say, okay, you know, finish this. That or you know just less historical information. We may want to extract that from the current owners of the right, property exactly. before we lose that uh, yeah. connection. You know. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on this agenda item? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So that takes us to other business, and the first thing is our beaver management study. Do you have anything else you want to share with us on that point? Um, I, I was just telling, telling Mike, uh, I, have an e I have an email that I'm going to send to him. We have some preliminary draft uh, information. Uh, they've made a model, and they've applied the model to uh, what they've got. They've got two, or two more areas to, to review, uh, but they've applied the model to the topography and stream data and other things collected already. And to see how well it worked, it came up with uh, a number of the areas that we highlighted as problem areas. So the model is working well. Mm -hmm. So that's encouraging. There's there's some tweaking we want to do to it, and uh, they're going to continue working on that. So we have a, a substantial, substantial map already of uh, areas, uh, problem areas, potential problem areas, 
uh, that it seems to be pretty accurate. So that's that's good. Yeah. Um, they've been able to get into most of the areas. Uh, they don't like to fly the drone when they can't see it, so it's it's only within sight. So even some of the areas that are that are deep that they can't get into, they still can. They can still fly the thing willy nilly. They're you know having to be able to have eye contact with it. So they've taken some great photos, uh, some good footage, and they're gonna just gonna make that available to us. And uh, she will be available to come in on the next meeting is 15th. So I was gonna talk to you about including an agenda item. In case you'd like to come in, GZ would like to come in and make a presentation to us as to what they've collected so far and where, where they stand on the project. Okay. Well, it's going to be a busy meeting, our next meeting, so please be oh. prepared. Yeah, I mean, it's if that's not the right time, then we can... No, I, I, yeah. I think it would be good to get an update because okay. I'd like to hear from them before we say we're done. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because after that, then we have to wait till the beginning of the fall. So. Right. Okay. Makes sense? We only have one meeting in September. You do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the first meeting falls on Labor Day. So, so unless you want to add a meeting, I see everyone's hand go up. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We will be. All right. Uh, anything else? Um, the invasive plans uh, plants at Brookside Drive. Uh, I have been communicating with uh, Forrester Mike. Uh, he is processing the permit with DEF so that way we can spray near the water and use appropriate uh, uh, spraying techniques near the water and have DEF approve that. Uh, I've also been working with the town to try and uh, get the, um, the vehicles, trailers, landscaping materials, and all the other things that are on our property removed so we can spray completely. So I'm moving that process. I had originally thought that we would use this meeting for a public hearing with the neighbors, uh, but because I wasn't sure that we had everything lined up and the ducks were all in the right row, there's still potential that the DES permitting process would take longer than expected. Uh, but so I was thinking that we would, on the 15th of September, have a public hearing and invite all the neighbors to, to uh, come down and learn about what it is we're doing. Uh, address any of their concerns about what we're doing and uh, and just you know make them part of the process uh, as opposed to them just seeing someone out there with a spraying device so yeah well suited up then <laughs> yeah well suiting up just for the clarification yeah. is gloves yeah okay there's no masks required for the for yeah. the material he's going to be putting down uh, so it is a very safe process for the applicator as well as for the anyone else that might wander into the area and that's kind of part of the reason why we want to do this is to make is to reassure folks that we're not you know doing something that's going to have people in spacesuits walking around because it's not going to happen that way. So we should though just for spacesuits. As long as you're willing, as long as you're willing to be at the dispatch office to get all those phone calls, I'm sure they'd love it. <laughs> They would have the entertainment of watching you dealing with those phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> the next meeting would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee public participation. <laughs> so no, that's good to know, though, that yeah. the applicator needs gloves on. Yeah, that gloves on. Yeah, yeah. That tells a lot right there. But I do hope we are well attended yeah. in that September meeting just so people can ask questions. So Yeah, so, um, so to go with that, what I was um, – setting up with Sue was to us actually to do a mailing to all the folks who live from one Brookside to about 30 Brookside Drive or 20 Brookside Drive. Our property is, we're dealing with the areas between 8 and 12 Brookside. So I didn't know how far reaching you wanted to make the ma mailing go. I mean, we can do entire Brookside, but that puts people a half a mile away being invited. We can hit the street behind Brookside or, or close to Patton Road. If you want to go into that neighborhood area, do you have anyone have any thoughts on what you want to do for the I mailing? I would like to go broad for the simple fact of getting people to be aware of what's going on. Yeah. I, 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 how, how easy is that? Is it, you know, we're going to be spraying in your backyard. You know, granted, it may not be close to you, but this is what's going on in your backyard. 
So all the way out to Panton Road there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to, I'd like to get to know, if, even if they just read it, like, oh, not Ludo, that does not read. You know, look, they go look it up. I mean, I just, so people start to get an under, understanding of how invasive and how much problem this is. Especially, it, it seems like the river follows the road, or the, sorry, the brook follows the road. So. Yeah, it's really hard to tell where that road comes from. Yeah. Maybe I'm include fine a map that. so that they don't feel like, you know, mm -hmm. confused with the, because they show yeah. up and they're like, oh, that's not really the Mary Ewing road, and then they're like, oh, yeah, we need to go on that. Yeah. But it's entirely not the Mary Ewing road. Yeah. Maybe I need to get a new, another room. Still gorgeous. The pool tour is probably there. We may have to have the meeting earlier, like at 6 o'clock. We don't, we don't normally Patsy meet till 7.30. Oh. Is that early? Yeah, we yeah. might be early. Might be, I mean, worst comes to worst, we can kind of fill this up and let the people yeah. walk in real quick. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be the biggest. There's a lot of chairs back there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I can work that. So, um, so the public hearing, we'll probably put the notice out uh, between 10 and 15 days. So right after Labor Day, we'll probably get the mailing out. That's the, that's the target. There's no legal requirement as to how many days because this isn't a legally required public hearing. This is more of an education hearing. Should I call it that as opposed to a public hearing? Yes. Uh, or, yeah, okay. All right, where the public will certainly be allowed to speak, right? Is, uh, is Mike gonna be here? Yeah. So I, I also asked him if he could bring the equipment that he plans on using so he can not demonstrate per se, but at least show. That's what I keep wanting. Just with water. See, it's safe. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any mold or mildew on you, we'll take care of that too. <laughs> Bring your uh, gloves. Yeah, that's what I, I, I wanted, you know, figured why not, right? So, I mean, he is licensed, of course, and I, of course the inter internet and all that too, so. Will he know by, from DEF, by the September meeting? Uh, we certainly hope so. Okay. Yeah. Because he wanted to do it this year. He did. Okay. And the end of September is an ideal time to do it because water levels are on their way down before we get the late fall rains that we need to have. So, um, When it comes to April's side, the neighbor that's being impacted by the invasive is still working that issue. Okay. Um, of course, Tom Manners is going to assist in me with that a little bit. So. Do we have the ability, or do you have the ability to be involved in this extra in this um, extra spraying? Do what? In the property directly? I mean, if she on her own. Well, no. If you say she wanted to hire, um, you know, our Mike to come in and do it, mm -hmm. you know, is that something that's available to her? Or I would think, right? Yeah. To be able to hire him, right? Directly. Yeah. So I have spoken to her, she's also contracted someone to do that kind of work for her. Um, this was a while back. She was looking to have the, the material removed after spraying. Okay, and that's not something that we were planning on doing on our own property. Because uh, once the material is dead, it mulches and becomes fertilizer for more invasive plants. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Right, it does. Garlic will take more than it does. Yeah. So. So I, yeah, so I'm not sure that the price tag she had on that entire activity was more than she was willing to spend at that time. Right, well, that's the thing. So, I mean, it, I, you know, the, the amount of money that she'd have to spend with with, uh, with our forester to go and yeah. do their yard may be. I have not brought that option by itself up with her because I was hoping to have more information from the town manager as to. Mike went and reviewed that whole area, right? He saw yeah. it. Did, you s did he see you know, her, her, her backyard? Yep. We watched it. We asked. We asked her if we could go out there, and she was more than willing to let us take a look. So we'll have a great opportunity to talk mm -hmm. to Frank on the fifteenth of August. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, do, do you, uh, is anyone? Uh, do you have any, anyone have any reason to speak to them in the next couple of weeks? The Mike. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to speak to them this week. Is it? Is that? Um, can you get a price differential from them? Say, look, you know, yep. like while you're on the stream, can, can you turn around and spray this to well, them? You know, what, how much right. extra will that? So, so Mike in general said it's about a hundred dollars an hour. Okay. For him to spray, and he 
felt that there was an hour to two hours worth of additional spring required to do her job. Okay, so we already have kind of a we have a ball guesstimate. Yeah, and okay. I, you know, and Lark thinks he's gonna be there. Right now, if he had to come out clean, it'd be different. Right, exactly. So, uh, so, so yes. Yeah, so we, um, w what I'm, what we're looking into is is two things: is to see if there's a liability with the town by not doing anything. That, I mean that's that you ha always have to be thinking about that, and then or is there a liability in case we did do something on her property and something was to happen, and that's the other right. part of it. And then the question is, is, is we setting a precedent by spending town funds on private property to look back to that? And uh, all those questions I want to get a good answer for all of you before we come back with it. Okay. Well, our initial feel is. I won't speak to the liability because I don't have that information, but the precedent in that part is we, there's an invasive problem. If we don't deal with her property, right. the problem on our property is going to come back rather quickly. So if we handle everything all together, the issue on our own property could be a few years away from having to reoccur and do maintenance. Um, we probably would have to do significant maintenance very quickly if we didn't touch her property or her property didn't get dealt with. Of course, as the as her being the owner, she has the ultimate say. So, so that's the that's the initial thought right now. So we may want to consider expanding the scope and, yeah. and getting it done. Yeah. Not not saying that, that that's not a good idea, but I was I was what I was talking about was saying, you know, have her hire Mike for two hours mm -hmm. while he's here. You know, so it's not we're not paying for it. It would be the private homeowner's payment, but again, it'd be one one job. So I, so Mike was aware that that was something we were going to look at. That's why he gave me those general numbers. So, because so. I can only imagine what Tom would say if he was here about us starting to spend money on private property. Right. And I agree with him. I mean, once that money is under the tent, it's gonna. Yeah. Here comes the rest. Right. Absolutely. All right. So that's all I have on that. Um, Sign for Wildcat Falls. Uh, Done and waiting to be picked up. Okay, and it's under 100 bucks, 86 dollars. Yeah. Were we able to get some kind of like a fee-resistant type of coating or anything on it? Or no, no. It's a um, the the person that contracted doesn't have that, and it would have been just for the piece, without any wording on it, would have been well over 100 dollars. Did you make that? Then, if you apply lettering to it, you need to have that fee, so or you could apply it, then send it back with that coded. Um, then you know the the price escalates very quickly. And I looked at other contractors as well, and it is you know typically um, twice or three times the price that you would get with that coded. So how how long have you had that? Take it off. Yeah, I was just thinking. Yeah, that. and just recover the same sign. We could try it. It's a brand new sign, and if you're gonna try it, we could try it now. Yeah. Cause I was thinking the same thing. You know, you yeah. use that epoxy that you pour on the tabletops, and it gets that real thick. Just pour it on there, and you just so you go up there every couple years, and you buff it. You know, take rubbing compound, and just buff the snot out of it, and you still wouldn't be hitting the sign. Is was the damage? Paintball? No, no, it was spray. A spray. Yeah, yeah. The picture I have from ten years ago now is clearly shows spray paint. So if we put it higher on the tree, mm -hmm. less likely to be spray painted. By a casual spray painting, yeah. By someone who's determined to do it, they'll do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they'll or they'll paintball it. You get it too high, you just can't get through it. Right. Because if you, you where it was, you're coming down a hill. Right, right. So you have a good, you know, from 10, 15 feet away, you're, you're eyeball with it. Right. But to climb a tree with no branches would be pretty difficult. So if we went out with a ladder, hung it high, mm -hmm. not too high, just high, right. that would help. likely avoid the spray painting. So I, I kind of like the idea of exploring the, the idea of spraying it before we put it out there. 
with some sort of a clear marker or something like that. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Or at least we can we can polish off. You know, I think we should just. Oh well, that means we'd have to either take it down or create a generator up there. <laughs> so we're gonna polish up right now. I'll go tomorrow and get it. Okay. And then we can take a look. Should I just take a picture of it and send it around? Yeah, I guess we need to find out what would be an appropriate material to try. Or do we get some sort of a, a, a plastic layer you could just you yeah. can use as self adhesive or something. Mm. That wouldn't take the shine how off of it. How are those letters put on? Same way the other ones were so are they they fly are they printed? Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to do a custom sort of face for that. I think we'd peel it's it off. Layer, so yeah, have we'd have to. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can make a make your own. Maybe you can ask when we pick it up if he has any thoughts or suggestions. Yeah, we could we could get just. How how big is it? Twenty four by eighteen. Twenty four by eighteen. Yeah. So we'd buy a, buy a single square piece of lecturn, a lecturn lecturn, and put four four places in it. Put it on. We have. And then every couple of years, every however yeah, often, we, we replace it. We have a piece it. of lectern. It's not cheap. Lecterns aren't cheap. But we can get it cut for size. We can drill a couple holes in it and just put it here and bolt it on. Keep it on all the time. Yeah, just, just screw it on. And then every couple of years, you, you take it off. And Cost us I bet the lectern would be in like a leather trailer, right? Yeah, yeah I have a piece that was in. Yeah, it's not cheap. It was in conservation stock. Well, let's let's look up the Smithsonian and see. You know, if we get the size of Smithsonian, let's look up and see how much it costs to shoot the big lectern, and then we'll we can go from there. Because if it's if it is if it's more than a sign, then it doesn't really it's kind of useless. Yeah. <laughs> just take that off and throw it away. You might as well just keep do it for something else. So. Let's let's get some plans going. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else have anything else? I do have a couple of items. I figured I'd let someone else talk for a moment if they want. All right, so um, Newt, uh, got a call from someone he knows who has uh, 14 to 22 or something along that number of telephone poles, the older style telephone poles that have come out of somewhere. They're anywhere, they're anywhere around 17 feet, plus or minus five feet in length. Um, this person is um, is trying to sell the property that has the poles on it and wants the poles either removed or he's going to take care of them himself. So we have a window now till probably you know late October to decide whether or not we want these and if we wanted them, where do we want to put them? So when Adam was here before the meeting, I asked him if he had a place to store them, and he said, yeah, you could probably find a place to store them. Question is, is do we want the old Prius what's it Prius pole? Creosote. Creosote style telephone poles for future bridge projects like we've used. We've used poles for bridge projects are before. Are these, are these poles, do you know anything? Like have they been outside and weathered or are they? Yeah, they're outside now. They're, they're not fresh. They're not fresh. Yeah, Prius poles. Th these are, these are old poles that were okay. removed or taken down or whatever from locations that are still in supposedly good shape. Yeah. Looks likely that a lot of that is already stuff leached is out. <laughs> stuff is wherever the poles were. Right. right. When you wouldn't be removing the poles. Yeah. Right. So there's no, I mean, it's legal to use those, and there's no environmental law that says you can't use those for standing water, or it just has creosote. I, I don't know. I I'm just wondering. I, I don't think he yet will let you use them in a bridge project if it's ever going to touch the water. If it's maybe bank to bank and you know above high water level they may but I know when you fill when you fill out a, a permit a bridge permit they ask the material and the poles if you're using poles they want the date the date or every of date of manufacture every pole is stamped right. with the date and they want to know what the date is. I understand this, but this Prius Oak is from outside, never took care of it. So that's kind of a concern. I'm not even sure we have the date from this place. So I haven't inspected them. I haven't looked them out. So 
Okay. So the question was, is do we, is this something we want to pursue? Do we want to say thank you, but no thank you? Or does someone want to, you know, speak to Newt and go take a look and bring it back to our next meeting? Because we still have a window. We have time. We did check into a few places to get them hauled to Merrimack. And the prices were somewhere between 350 and $400 to have them mailed. Delivered. Do you know how far? They're someone, I'm not sure if it was Yale or uh, New Boston or something like that, but it was somewhere in, in that area. My initial feeling is that yeah. I wouldn't want them. I mean, that's my initial I know, feeling. I know what you're saying. You, you, you can't use them for any, anywhere you have water, supposedly have water contact. And uh, every place we're putting bridges we're spanning you know low spots and stuff like that where we're having streams and water so I don't know if it's probably worth another twenty four hundred dollars to get something that's going to be a liability we haven't you know we, we, we haven't used them for a while but to build bridges the last bridge that we built them but I know we don't use them that for a while the last bridge that we built at Horse Hill with poles they were green poles they were and even though we didn't need a permit to put them in, we made sure that they were green poles before we got them. It was a bank to bank, no water contact, no DEA requirement. But we made sure they were green poles just because. Yeah. I don't know. Who bypass it? Unfortunately, I appreciate it though. Okay, that works. Um, uh, well, I was at the Horse Hill Committee. I got some pictures of the new bench. Matt, you've probably seen it before. Uh, this is the Hill Watson bench that was put up uh, near the Bradish Bridge, in case you're familiar with that, That's off great. of the Loop Trail. Um, and I'm told it has a, a, it has a great overlook kind of looking in that part of the of the property so uh, it looks like a great bench so the exact date of the um, of the of the um, I guess what's the right word for that of the dedication uh, hasn't been set yet but uh, Newt is working with the Watson family to figure out what's the right time and to do that and as soon as I have that information I will certainly pass that along to everyone so nice job Newt that's yeah, great. so so they're kind of designed so you could sit on them and they've got wings so you could put your backpack down and keep it off the ground in case you wanted to or you could bring a lunch and, and get your cooler right there and, and have lunch uh, and watch the goings on because there's certainly lots of stuff happening in the woods when you sit down and be quiet for a minute. So, all right, so that uh, at the Horse Hill Committee meeting, there was a a young lady who came from uh, uh, the League of Conservation Voters, and she uh, wanted to make sure that we were aware of some of their activities. Um, so I'm, I can pass that around. There is a card there you and their address there if you want to learn more about what they're doing and what they're up to. Uh, we did update on the website, the Horse Hill Nature Preserve map. So it turns out the website has the old version. The new version actually has GPS coordinates for the posts on it as well. So if you find yourself in trouble out there, find a post, use the map and give the GPS coordinates to the person you're speaking to. So uh, other stuff I've gotten is DES sends out their normal thing about water. In case you're interested, it's here. You can see me after the meeting. Uh, Berry Conservation Camp put out a little thing. It's here. Uh, the uh, tree farmer is here. And I think at the last meeting I let you all know this, but I, of course I got another copy of Horse to Nook and you've probably seen this before. So, so I put that here. It's all, if you're interested in borrowing it, taking it with you, by the way, I don't throw any of these things away. I'm just, I, there's an empty file drawer in the file cabinet in our office and I just throw them in there when I'm done with them. So there's, I'm not organizing them or anything. So. <laughs> Just wanted to make you aware. Uh, and the last thing to keep in mind is, is that
first Saturday in November is going to be the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commission's meeting, which I think is a little further north this year than it has been in the past. Uh, but it's uh, first Sunday, first Saturday. Yeah. I think it's actually November first. Yes. Or is it the third? The first. First. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Forty fourth annual meeting. Yeah, because um, my wife's birthday is being here in November, and it tends to be on her birthday and not on her birthday. So it just bounces around. So. So just keep that in mind. Um, I will be looking for folks who are interested in going to cover their fees for attending. We'll probably be talking about that in either the September or early October meeting. So um, that's all I have for other business. Anyone else have anything? Uh, I just real quick, we're going to be, uh, I know we've spoken about this before, but uh, September, where are we at? 12th? We're going to be hosting the um, we are hosting a stop for UNH to come in and have a uh, beaver workshop talk with for conservation commissioners. So uh, it's going to be one to four, and it's going to be up in the uh, Mass Sporting Room. So I'm going to uh, try to get from uh, UNH from from that talk. You know, kind of the how many people they're expecting, so we can. You know, all we're doing is uh, sponsoring the room, so I figured maybe we could get coffee and uh, cookies or something like that. We can do it then, maybe. Can I get a figure for the math? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna be coming back and asking for some money. So well, that'll happen before our next meeting. Yeah. So are we well. are we good with uh, are we with spending some of our funds for this? Yeah. Giving I mean, I'm Dave I'm some leeway. Yeah, I'm gonna you know probably a couple boxes of coffee and some juice and cookies. I'm not sure how much. I have no idea what how many people we're gonna have. So yeah. I might uh, just to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an idea. We just we should. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, the town's donating the room. I think we should. When I when I have more specifics on what we're what's going on, I'll uh, I can email it out. And because uh, obviously it's gonna be open to the conservation commissioners. So. Yeah. And anyone in general. Advertising it everywhere, but we're targeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it's tar they they they're targeting yeah. conservation commissioners yeah. because those are the people that can actually make you know uh, other than private landowners and their own property, but it's uh, mostly for private for conservation commissioners. Mm -hmm. Should we put this on the vote? Um, uh, I can find out from Matt how he'd like me to. Uh, he he and Emma are taking care of it, so I'm just kind of standing back. But uh, I certainly can ask him if he'd like us to advertise it. Yeah, because so I can put it on the website too, so yeah. they know. Because it's roast tar I mean, roast is conservation commission. Right. And it's a local conservation commission. So those are going to be the people that are most likely yep. to come. I think they. I can. I'll ask them about that, and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, minutes of August the fourth. Like to move that. Move them with them with amendments. Just make it. Seconded by Matt. Um, I've got a few. So let's go to page two, uh, line 41. Does everyone have a copy of that? So it starts off, when asked, Mr. Disco stated the expectation construction will begin. I think he or she would say the expected construction as opposed to expectation. So that's line 41. Did I say 42? Um, so, and then line 42, I think the beginning of it should say is included in the capital improvements plan. The word in should be added in there. Um, let me move us forward to page six. Uh, page six, uh, line four says Mr. Duane inform the commission he will be bringing, I guess that should be bringing, the G needs to be added to that word. Um, there's some spaces in here between 16 and 19 that kind of need to be cleaned up or readjusted um, on this page. And then uh, when we go to page seven, um, line 46, uh, it says Hanson Drive. I think that's Hanson Drive. The N should be an M. Hanson. 
Um, and then when we go to the page eight, uh, line 10, it's kind of read awkward to me. So I guess it should say Chairman Tenhead remarked the commission has considered conducting the public hearing for the indices as opposed to considering. Uh, and then on line 17, um, uh, Dave is speaking, um, crosses a stream along, I think you actually did say Blood Road, but did you want that to say Old Blood Road? Uh, yes, that's definitely Old Blood Road. So that's line 17 should be Old yeah, Blood I Road. I while we're there, they, um, the, the area that, there's two areas there that are that are we spoke about and I, they're kind of jumbled together here the area that crosses the crosses blood road and going towards the classroom is very wet once you cross the stream and head towards the classroom it's become very steep so it was we kind of mixed the both together I mean you can't you'll see both areas because once you walk out there so uh, I don't know if we need to clarify so that's not BB lane is it no old blood Oh yeah, that's not that's Bambi Lane. Sorry, yeah, Bambi good, lane. good catch, Mike. <laughs> it's Bam. So line sixteen. Yeah, line sixteen should be Bambi Lane. Yeah. Bambi Lane. Okay. And it crosses a stream. It's Wait become very steep. The area that crosses Blood Road is very wet. So I mean, it's there's two. But I, and again, I, I don't think really we need. I mean, if you go out there and yeah. na navigate that path, you're going to find both items. So it, they're all within you know 50, 50 foot space. So. So it's both steep and wet. One part's very wet, one part's very steep. Oh, okay. So, but again, you're you're there on both of them when you're walking through there, so it's not that big a deal. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I else I noticed is between pages nine and ten, there's uh, another big piece of white space, and I'm not sure if that's just a, a formatting with the printer or that's the way it is. That's all I have. Anyone have any other changes or adjustments? Okay. Um, by the way, for the last minutes where we had the confusion as to who was speaking when it was referencing Commissioner Thompson, who wasn't no longer with us, uh, uh, the minutes were corrected based on the video and, and stuff, so that it should all be correct. And John agreed to that she would go through and, and get it right. So, okay. Um, all right. So on page two, line fifteen, was in the line. Uh, the intent is to construct a retaining wall, not a retaining fall. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, on uh, page four, line twenty-four. log for lumber operation was that's uh that's the log for lumber operation was a was a single event that happened there's no it's not there now it's so that was the okay. is the is should be a was is should be a was okay yeah and uh along that same line for 40 line page five line 42 i'm not sure if and I mean, this may be exactly how I said it, but it doesn't really read very well. Um, and I'm not so I'm not sure that sentence really is straightforward. You know, it's uh, his thought was that the commission shouldn't be approving things; it should not be just because the process is easier. I'm not sure if that really makes sense to anybody. Yeah. You know, it's You want to suggest something? Different? Yeah, if it shouldn't be approving things, you know, just strike out. It should not be just because I should. This shouldn't be approving things because the process is easier. Would be, I would think, would make it read, read a little bit more clearly. Or, it should not be just because. Yeah, the word be after not. Okay. 
Yeah, either way, I just think if that's just for clarification, you may want to. No, no, no. Again, I don't know exactly how the wording. Well, I had to read that a couple times to try to figure out what I was saying. So, okay. Uh, and I think that's all I have. Anyone else? All those in favor of the minutes as corrected, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, that's 401 with Mike abstaining. Okay. Uh, so next is uh, public comment. Anyone in the public wish to speak? Seeing none. Commissioner comments? Uh, Mike? I think I've spoken enough. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded by Mike. Moved by Matt. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Passes 500 at 8.13 p.m. Thank you, everyone. The orange or beaver patch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For, uh, I mean this, uh, this is great, Mike. Thank you very much. <laughs> Get you a bumper sticker too, man. Actually, we should get <laughs> we should get the magnetic things that stick to the side of your driver and passenger door. <laughs> Cameras and mics are on. You, you want this extra copy? <laughs> <laughs> Cameras and mics are on, folks. <laughs>